Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, and this is your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're here live at the World Trade Center in Seattle. We've got some amazing guests here. We're going to be talking about marijuana media, starting with Garrett Rudolph of Marijuana Venture. Garrett is the editor-in-chief of Marijuana Venture, a leading business magazine for the legal cannabis industry and host of the Retail and Dispensary Expo. Marijuana Venture was the first monthly magazine focused on the legal cannabis industry, and the company now has published 80 print magazines since its inception. In 2015, it was named one of the 30 hottest launches out of more than 800 new titles across the country. Prior to launching Marijuana Venture, Garrett was the editor of a twice-weekly newspaper in Eastern Washington. After announcing at a column he was leaving the newspaper, Seattle area businessman Greg James contacted him about pick and shovel opportunities within Washington's newly regulated marijuana industry. Together, they started Marijuana Venture with the idea of targeting business owners, managers, and investors in the emerging recreational cannabis market. The publication began as an eight-page black and white newsletter that quickly gained acclaim among Washington's business hopefuls and eventually grew into an award-winning national distributed 164-page glossy magazine. The company has since expanded into the event sector with Interchange, a twice-yearly buying and selling event for Washington businesses, and the Retail and Dispensary Expo, an annual trade show specifically for cannabis business retailers. Eric, thanks for being here today. Thank you. And then remotely, we have Dave Rines. Dave is the founder of the Marijuana Business Association. The MJBA is a leading business organization in the fastest growing industry in America. The MJBA provides business intelligence, professional networking, and commercial opportunity for participants in the legal cannabis industry. Founded in 2012, Seattle-based MJBA hosts many cannabis industry trade shows, professional education seminars and workshops, and publishes the most popular MJ headline news on Facebook, mjnewsnetwork.com, Marijuana Green Pages, and Marijuana Channel 1 on YouTube. Dave is a frequent speaker and moderator at Seattle Hemp Fest, CannaCon Shows, Collaborative Conference, uh, Cannabis World Conf Congress, and Business Expo, and a regular columnist for Freedom Leaf Magazine. He's a proven business leader with 30 years of experience building and operating festive free media and marketing organizations. Dave has an, an impressive track record as a senior executive for Rolling Stone, Spin, High Village, Corbis, Time Warner, and America Online. Dave, thanks for being here with us. Thanks for having me. Bess Byers is with us with Blaze Creative. Bess is a Seattle-based cannabis photographer and digital marketing professional. Bess graduated from Washington State University with a BA in public relations, moved to Beijing uh, to intern at a graphic design agency before moving to LA to work in marketing research. All that changed in March of 2015 when she received a job offer from Western Culture, a legal cannabis cultivation company. She slowly transitioned from working in the garden to a sales role and then social media and marketing. By January 2016, Bess joined Grassworks Digital before starting her own company, Blaze Creative, in January 2018, providing content creation, social media management, and other digital marketing services. And independent employment has allowed Bess to pursue her passions, including writing, photography, brand development, influencer outreach, and politics. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. And also remotely with us is Cy Williams of High Canada. Cy is the editor and publisher for the long-standing Canadian cannabis culture publication, High Canada Magazine, as well as the recently launched High Europe Magazine. A staple within the Canadian cannabis community for the last several years, High Canada comes out monthly and serves its community by informing and educating Canadians on all things cannabis in both Canada and internationally. Cy, thank you for being here. And Sharon Whitson of HempFest, Sharon is the Chief Operating Officer of Seattle HempFest, joining the organization in 2004. She loves saying that a PTSA soccer mom runs HempFest as family is a huge focus in her life. Sharon quickly found that her project and business management background could be leveraged to help HempFest evolve and was attracted by the passionate environment HempFest creates. In 2012, she founded HempFest Central, the organization's first office fronted by a Hemp Culture 420 Culture Store, as, and as the 28th annual HempFest approaches, she looks back on the 28 years of hardcore activism that laid the groundwork for legalization to blossom with great pride and determination. She said, quote, we've come a long way, we still have a long way to go. And when she's not at HempFest leading the charge towards HempFest, she's loving camping, hiking, and spending time on the river with her family. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. And about the World Trade Center, we are at the World Trade Center in Seattle. There's several of these. It's one of the largest uh, 
business networks in the world with 300 offices in 99 countries, and the World Trade Center in Tacoma is the lone trade center service for the Pacific Northwest. They offer uh, trade shows and investments, and providing direct access to a large business network. They have seminars, award ceremonies, and conferences that can generate contacts and contracts. Their trade research can clarify opportunities, and their matchmaking can turn, turn those opportunities into trade. The one thing I like about it is their e-commerce store. Uh, they partner with Alibaba. It's translated into 18 languages and offers products like CBD, at least for now, to get into harder reach spots like Europe uh, and Asia. Uh, they also have um, good spots for, for business banking. So if you need an international letter of credit or bank guarantee, World Trade Center is your spot. So Garrett, how do you personalize content but still reach the masses? The reason I ask is because digitization of content and ongoing innovations and technology will continue to drive growth and force changes in the media and entertainment industry to continue to experiment with new revenue streams, particularly to reap the benefits from digital subscriptions and online advertisements. So overall, the media and entertainment industry is expected to grow to $771 billion this year, according to Price Waterhouse Coopers. The digitization of content is an ongoing trend and issue. The old saying, adapt or die, applies directly here. The publishing companies that face challenges and are still alive created online content and adapted their products for laptops, tablets, and smartphones. They've strategized ways to keep revenue flowing. Many others, however, didn't succeed in adapting and are now gone. The rise of increasingly personalized, personal and personalized media interactions as today's consumers, eager, highly selective, and voracious, seeks the opportunity to enjoy media experiences tailored to their own preferences, context, and schedules. Consumers are using an expanding array of connected devices to organize, curate, and discover their own unique worlds of media. And so Garrett, how do you personalize content with Marijuana Venture Magazine that still reach the masses? I would say it's really, really hard. And, and in a lot of ways, I would say we don't. Um, you know, some of that kind of comes back to that thing that I mentioned earlier about the state by state nature of things. It's really hard for us to write about as a business magazine to write about regulations and, and changes in regulations and, and things that, you know, business owners, business managers need to be aware of. And to do that in a national business magazine that goes out all across the country and all across Canada and somehow be relevant to somebody who's reading it in Massachusetts, who's reading it in Washington, who's reading it in Toronto. It's quite frankly, almost impossible to, to do, especially in a, in a printed format. And, uh, you know, so I think that from our perspective, you know, we kind of try to focus on a bigger kind of, bigger issues that can be translated toward other markets, even if the issue itself is maybe specific to, to one region and kind of extrapolate that through other, through other states or through other regulatory formats. I, I think I feel fortunate that we're in Washington because I, I think that in a lot of ways, Washington is a really good kind of microcosm of, you know, bigger picture issues that we see throughout the country. Um, you know, I think the fact that we don't have vertical integration here, I think gives us a little bit of a different insight into, you know, consumer trends and that kind of stuff than, than we might see in, in Colorado where, you know, you walk into a shop and oftentimes the cannabis that you're able to buy there is produced by the shop itself or the, the company that owns the shop, um, which is pretty similar to what you see in, in most markets across the country. Um, so, you know, questions like branding, how much, you know, how important is branding and, and you know, creating a, a brand that consumers are willing to, you know, be loyal to, how much does that matter? Well, I think we get to see that in kind of a crucible in Washington a lot more than you would in, say, Colorado, where, you know, you go in and, and it's, you know, there's, there's obviously pros and cons of both sides, but, you know, the, it's the, the deli style uh, cannabis behind the counter, you know there's not really a brand associated with that. It's kind of more the retail brand generally. So, you know, I, I think that, that being in Washington kind of gives us a little bit of a, an edge in that regard, you know, compared to maybe other people who are, uh, you know, in Colorado and see that market. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, like it's really, really tough and it's kind of something we, we wrestle with on a, on a, on a day to day or week by week or issue by issue basis. You know, how do we produce content in a print magazine that can't really be personalized to every single reader or to, you know, even large chunks of, of, the, of our readership on a regular basis. 
and without a, a big focus on digital, um, you know, which we, we've always been print first and that's been, you know, kind of our, our bread and butter and that's where we intend on staying, to be honest. Um, it, it, it's hard to kind of get the minutia that, you know, a, a regulatory change might affect uh, a business in, you know, on the East Coast that might not affect anybody on the West Coast. So, yeah, it's challenging and it's probably something that we, you know, kind of continue to evaluate every single issue. The content's solid. I like reading the marijuana venture. It's on the podcast probably at least once a week. Appreciate that. So, what about you? What are you seeing up in Canada? Uh, how are you personalizing content and reaching the masses now that you're in Europe? You're, you're everywhere. As I mentioned before, we really try to focus on the people's stories behind the plant, the, um, the entrepreneurial startups or the, um, the growers or the, um, we don't try to focus so much on the product or the brand. And we, um, we, we really, we, using the High Canada Magazine reps, we're really able to get out there into the communities and, and you know, find, uh, you know, uh, patients who are willing to tell their stories that have impact not only in their own region, but nationally uh, when it comes to uh, raising awareness for what uh, cannabis, THC, and CBD can do. Uh, and for, yeah, for us, it's, it's really, big. we've always personalized around the people. Now, uh, over the last two years, we've, We've talked, uh, we, we started talking to um, uh, more business owners, um, like 360 Secure and, um, and like uh, more niche companies out here and how, uh, uh, and, and telling their stories in order to inspire other entrepreneurs to kind of step up and uh, do something similar. And we've, uh, we've spoken to, uh, there's a lot of Canadian musicians who are getting, um, who are finally feeling um, able to release new, new material um, that's, that's, you know, 420 friendly. That's uh, that's pro cannabis. So we've been talking to a lot of like new, new artists there as well. Um, plus, we we focus on we try to um we really we do a lot of reviews and uh, and do a lot of uh, um, really get out there and make sure that we can sample like different types of CBD product and uh, different types of legal. Uh, now that the laws have shifted, uh, new legal products uh, to share with our readers as well. So. Uh, but we've always stuck with the people stories here. Something you want to add? Yeah, a couple things. Um, you know, one way that we've helped connect with the community is for some of the photo shoots we do, especially lifestyle content. I like to hire other influencers, um, like cannabis influencers, or even people that maybe they don't have a huge following, but they're someone that loves the brand. I'm often seeing them commenting on our posts, um, you know, hiring those people to really help make the community the face of your brand, especially if somebody loves your product they're going to want to help shoot photos, especially if they're getting paid to go smoke weed somewhere. Um, and then you send them the photos afterwards, they share them on social. Um, and it's just like very authentic word of mouth. Um, one other thing that I've seen a lot of success with for one of my clients is they invite a lot of the bud tenders to come and tour their grows or their labs, because you're getting these people in here that are obviously the point of sale that that you want that, um, but they're also going to be going there to create content to share on their channels as well. Yeah, let, let me just jump in because I, I think what I haven't heard yet about uh, personalization uh, is it's less about creating individual content for individual consumers and more about two things. One is understanding the conversations you're in and creating content for those participants in those individual conversations. Very well said. Uh, and the second thing is, um, this is an interactive media landscape. And so it's not just creating the content, but participating in their response and in uh, their conversation. So, you know, to be a good marketer, to be a good media company, to be a good, uh, you know, community organizer, to, to be an effective uh, participant in this industry, you have to listen as much as you talk uh, and embrace what people say, augment uh, when you can, and adjust when you have to. So with that, we're gonna roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid, this is a Talking Hedge. I wanna thank my guests. We have Garrett with Marijuana Venture. He's the editor-in-chief there at Marijuana Venture Magazine. I also want to thank Best Buyers. Best is with Blaze Creative. We also have right here Sharon. Sharon is with Pimp Fest. Uh, day one starts on Friday, so congratulations on 28 years. Mm -hmm. Yay. On the line with us remotely is Dave Bryans with 
uh, MJBA, the Marijuana Business Association. I want to thank you for being on the show with us today, Dave. Thanks for having me. And of course, Cy Williams with High Canada Magazine and High Europe Magazine. Congratulations on the expansion and thanks again for being with us. It was an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe or don't. And I'm out. <laughs> Yay! Thank you.